Today, I have an unusual task. I want to test the maximum load that this inverter can withstand on a single phase while operating in off-grid mode. I will disconnect the inverter's power supply with a circuit breaker. Additionally, I've installed an ammeter to observe the current flowing from the energy storage, as the inverter will also be drawing energy from the photovoltaic modules. To properly load the phase, I need to connect an electric car charger. This charger has an interesting feature. You can set the maximum charging power. I've set it to the maximum, which is 16 amps. In the Fossabot energy storage, I can also set the maximum power it will draw from the grid. The final energy consumer is an electric heater. Everything is metered. The circuit breaker is 25 amps. I hope it holds up. I'm turning off the power. We can see that the inverter is in off-grid mode. 21 amps are being drawn from a single energy storage unit. The meter can measure up to a maximum of 40 amps, which is why I've connected it to only one storage unit. I will turn on the heater at its maximum power. Fossabot draws 432 watts. The heater consumes 1,773 watts. The electric car charger draws 3,208 watts. In total, 5,400 watts are being consumed on just one phase. I'm increasing the energy consumption to 800 watts. Let's see what information the die inverter displays. The photovoltaic modules provide 1.7 kilowatts. We have 4.6 kilowatts from the energy storage and the energy consumption is nearly 6 kilowatts. Over 40 amps are being drawn from the energy storage and the meter is already beyond its scale. 805 watts plus 1,757 plus 3,173. I'm increasing the energy consumption to 1,200 watts. 1,085 plus 1,744 plus 3,144. In total, 6,073 watts and the inverter has now shut off. Overload. We now know the maximum load the die inverter can handle on a single phase. I will repeat this experiment, but this time I will distribute the load across two phases. The inverter turned itself on after 30 seconds. The inverter is still in off-grid mode, which means it's disconnected from the power grid. I plugged the cable from the electric car charger into a different phase. I've set the Fossabot energy storage to its maximum, which is 2,200 watts. 3,215 watts, 1,823, and in the third appliance, you can see how the energy consumption slowly increases. It reached 2,143 watts. In total, 7,181 watts. I know the inverter is capable of delivering up to 10 kilowatts across two as well as three phases. I won't be testing this further. I will reconnect the power supply. It's still off-grid because the inverter waits for 60 seconds before transitioning from off-grid to on-grid mode. This is the output from the inverter. There's voltage present in this cable at all times. The inverter quickly restores power from its internal generator within 10 milliseconds after an external power loss. You saw this in my previous video. Back then, I demonstrated that the duration is so short that even the computer doesn't freeze. We're drawing 15 amps from the energy storage because the sun came out and a lot of energy is coming directly from the solar panels. The batteries are just filling in the missing power. The sun has set and the power consumption from the energy storage immediately increased. We're now in the regular on-grid mode. We're getting two kilowatts from the rooftop panels. We have over 7 kilowatts from the energy storage. In our experiment, the house draws a total of 9 kilowatts across these three energy consumers, and from the grid, the inverter is only drawing 20 watts. I will now disconnect the power supply. We'll see how the inverter behaves when there's a power outage with such a significant load. I'm turning off the circuit breaker, and I'll show you what the watt meter indicates during this time with the largest energy consumer. If there are interruptions in the electricity supply at home, both short ones lasting a few seconds and longer ones lasting several hours, 
it's worth considering the purchase of a hybrid inverter and powering the entire house using its off-grid output. The inverter becomes an additionally powerful device. As you could see from the example of the die inverter I have, it can provide over 5 kilowatts of power on just one phase and a total of 10 kilowatts. Rarely does a home experience higher energy consumption. Of course, there are inverters with higher power capacities, such as 12 kilowatts. Any excess energy generated by PV modules, as soon as the inverter is connected to the grid, will be redirected, unless you set it to a zero export mode. In the case of the die inverter, there's no need to install an additional energy meter. Installing current transformers in the distribution panel and connecting their cables directly to the corresponding outputs in the inverter is sufficient. These are the data collected by the inverter during my experiment. The power consumption from the batteries is shown in green. At its peak, it reached over 7 kilowatts. The energy consumption by the consumers is marked in red. Here, the peak reached a whopping 9 kilowatts. The energy production from the photovoltaic system is indicated in blue. At this time of day, it's only 2.2 kilowatts. By the end of the day, some more energy was managed to be stored in the battery. Please let me know what other experiments interest you. What should I test on this inverter? Perhaps its interaction with a generator? Warm regards. Goodbye.